right, so now uh, I was going through my old uh, diagrams and figured this would be a good video to make again. I haven't felt like making a new one from scratch. Um, but in any case, this is a touch operated circuit. So the circuit here is just wired to hold everything in position the way it is. I can wiggle that resistor or that resistor, uh, doesn't matter. I actually have to touch the metal part that comes into direct contact with the uh, input right there. Um, so touching that resistor to the trigger pin sets the output high. It's going to stay high. Again, I can wiggle them as long as I don't touch that side of the metal part. can wiggle anything as long as it keeps making a contact. Everything's going to hold the same. The circuit is made to hold the same. My body actually gives a, a signal. It can give a brief enough voltage to now we overcame the threshold and uh, the threshold pin. It set the output low. And it's going to stay low, again, until we force it to change. There's no uh, movement that changes it or anything. It's literally the voltage that my body can uh, build up due to the alternating current in the house bombarding me with electromagnetic waves. And here is a close-up to the schematic diagram that I put together. I added some uh, extra stuff. Here is the pin layout for the 555 timer. Uh, that's the negative supply ground. Right below it, pin 2 is trigger. Pin three is the output, and uh, pin four is the reset pin. Then you can see one, two, three, four, jump across to five. Uh, control, the control pin, if you're not aware, the uh, 555 timer within it has three equal value resistors so that you get uh, response to one third of the supply voltage and two thirds of the supply voltage. And uh, the control pin, I can't remember which one it connects to. It connects to uh, one of them. Um, so you can adjust the resistance going to ground or the positive supply to adjust where the uh, trigger and threshold voltages fall. Um, so that's a, you know, a little bit complicated. You don't see that in many videos. A lot of times you'll see pin number five with the little capacitor 10 nanofarad, which is the same as 0 0.01 microfarad is usually the value that they use there to help stabilize that. But uh, the circuit doesn't need stabilization, so we can uh, disregard that. So we got the threshold pin, pin six, Discharge and VCC discharge connects to ground when you want to like discharge a capacitor. Usually the capacitor is at the threshold and it discharges through a resistor. Um, during the discharge phase, that's when the output is low as well. That's also where it discharges through the integrated circuit. So VCC is whatever the positive supply is. That's uh, based on uh, bipolar junction transistors, but it became common. That's just where the positive supply is for the entire circuit. Now. We have uh, pin four, the reset pin. It will set the output low if it has a low input. I think it's somewhere below halfway to ground. And uh, so in any case, you go to the positive supply, that stops it from doing anything. Because if you got a low input put to four, the output just stays low, no matter what. It's the most powerful pin here. And uh, so now we have pin two to the positive supply. I have a one million ohm resistor. It has to be fairly high right there because my body can't produce uh, much power. And uh, so that holds it high, that prevents two from doing anything, and a low input prevents six from doing anything. So that's a pull up resistor, because it's raising the voltage from whatever the stray going on in the air, except for my body can still build it up enough to overcome that. And then the pull down resistor has a, the lowest voltage the circuit could have to overcome the stray energy in the air but again my body can build up enough to overcome it so that's being held high and uh, we have to drop the voltage below one-third of the supply voltage so I think that's uh, 1.33 I believe volt somewhere in that range and my body can do that um, as long as we have a low or high enough value resistor I mean right there and 1 million as you can see was working fine that's what I'm using in this circuit and so it drops below uh, one-third of the supply voltage briefly um, but that's all it needs. That sets the output high if it was already low, or holds it high if it was high to begin with. And the red LED lights up. Red LEDs aren't as bright as blue LEDs, so I'm using a lower value resistor. Also, this connects to ground pretty well. It gets pretty close to zero volts when the output's low, whereas uh, when the output's high, you lose at least a volt, probably a volt and a half in this circuit. And uh, so we get more current through the red LED to try to get it as bright as a blue LED. So, in any case, that's what happens when we touch pin 2, give it less than one-third of the supply voltage. Output goes high, red LED. It's going to stay that way.
because that's the way a 555 timer is made, as long as uh, these two pins aren't doing anything. And uh, so in any case, once I touch up pin six, that gives a brief more than two thirds of the supply voltage. Between one third and two thirds, it will stay in whatever uh, state. And uh, But uh, we get above two thirds of the supply voltage since the output was high. Now that puts the output low. That's when the blue LED lights up. And again, it has a 1000 ohm resistor protecting it because it's naturally brighter, plus it connects to ground better. So it's easy to get uh, more current and a brighter LED. Um, so in any case, that lights that up as soon as I raise it above two thirds supply voltage. And uh, even with my body bouncing around, doesn't matter. It will hold into place once you've gotten over that threshold of two thirds or more. And uh, so you can touch it, uh, release it or hold it, whatever. The output's gonna stay in that state where uh, the output is low. So um, that's really about it for the circuit. Oh, I also added, uh, make sure you consult the data sheet for the particular 555 you're using. If you're used to using NE555, the micro A or UA, I don't know how they say that, 555, should work uh, pretty much exactly the same. I'm not sure what their difference is. LM555 is a CMOS version. Um, so it uh, has uh, different output capabilities is uh, the main thing. So not gonna go into that to detail here. Um, but in case, if you're using a 555 that you're not familiar with, different letters, make sure and check the data sheet and check uh, their limitations. So in any case, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting in the screen at the end of this video and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you on the next video.